Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. So today we're going to be talking about Lewis Dagger type nil. Hi everybody, Bill, big welcome to absolutely everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, and today we're gonna to be going into detail about Lua's data type, nil. So I guess if you're already familiar with programming concepts, then you'll probably seen null or undefined or nothing um, in other programming languages. And, and nil is really Lua's representation of that same concept. Now, for those of you who want a little bit more information as to what it really means, then sit tight. So I think the best way to really uh, explain what nil really is, is probably to look at a real world scenario. So if we were to write up a script, for instance, to represent the different states of waiting for a bus, um, we could probably have uh, in that script a, a variable for my bus. My bus all the time we're waiting for a bus would probably be nil. The reason it would be nil is because at the point of waiting for the bus, the bus isn't actually here. We can't do anything with the bus because there is no bus. We're aware of its existence and we know that there's definitely a place for it because we're waiting for it. So therefore we need a variable, but there's nothing really that we can do with the bus right now. So therefore we can't represent it in any form of data because it's not there. So therefore, what we can do is we can either assign nil, or interestingly enough, if you just declare a variable, say local, my bus, that will automatically have the value of nil in it already, because it's not been assigned to anything yet. Now, that bus then arrives. Once that bus arrives, we can actually do something with our variable, my bus, and we can actually uh, assign something in it to represent that bus, so therefore we can do something with it. So I guess when we were to think about a bus, we would probably need to define some kind of behavior on it. And I guess the best uh, form, uh, the best data type to be able to sign into bus will probably be table. So on the note of table, we're gonna be doing another video on tables and also functions, which I'm gonna be discussing in a moment as well. Uh, keep, uh, keep your eyes peeled and subscribe to the channel for those uh, videos to come through as well. So once we've got our bus table, um, we can assign that into bus. Now let's say on that table we had a function called jump on board. Jump on board is something that you tend to do when a bus arrives that you've been waiting for and that's behavior that we want to invoke. So uh, we've now got our bus variable, my bus, and we've actually got something meaningful against it that you can actually do something against as well. Now I'm guessing uh, the reason why a lot of you may well be here at this video is probably because you've seen uh, in Lua so far uh, an error that says uh, cannot index uh, a nil value. So now I'm going to explain what that's really doing. So uh, when we've got our bus variable which has a, a table and a function defined upon it, we can then say bus dot jump on board and that will go ahead and do something. But let's say, for instance, that bus is actually nil. It doesn't quite exist. Let's go back to the real world example. Well, to be really silly, if the bus wasn't there and you had to try and jump on board, the first thing you're gonna do is fall into the road. And that's exactly what you don't wanna do. So really, what we wanna do before we access our bus is actually check to see whether it is nil or not. So we can simply write an if statement to say, if the bus is nil or is not equal to nil, then go ahead and do something or don't do something appropriately. And that's probably what I will call a guard or defensive programming. And we'll probably go into some more videos to do with that topic a little later. But really the reason why we've got this error for cannot index a nil value is because in the instance of the bus variable being nil, um, what we've actually told Lua to do is to go look at the, uh, the variable bus and index or look up the function upon it of jump on board. So what Lua has actually done is looked up the variable bus and collected that from memory and has said, right, I'm gonna go and access this function. Unfortunately, what it actually did was looked up nil because that's what's been assigned to bus so far. And the minute it's looked at nil, it said, well, I'm afraid that there is no function upon nil for jump on board. So therefore I cannot index the function 
jump on board upon a nil value and that's exactly what their error meant. So at that point Lua had no choice other than to throw an error because it was obviously some form of behaviour that it had been asked to do that it couldn't execute. So just a small plug, uh, obviously we uh, represent Lua Script uh, as um, an oscillate. Uh, and Lua Script is a editor for um, Lua, which is web-based, which is coming in the next few weeks. So as you're writing your Lua in Lua Script, Lua Script actually uh, has some code in the background that recognizes and understands your code as you go along. And these kind of things are picked up by our Lua Script compiler. So it's able to see you've called bus.jump on board, and at the moment you've not allocated anything to this. Now the important thing to note is that Lua Script actually identifies this as you're writing the script. It doesn't identify this once you run the script, which is where your error has come from. And that's nothing but a good thing, really. If you can identify issues before you actually run your script, you're always going to be winning. So that's enough for nil. Uh, just uh, if you are, as always, if you are into uh, financial market activities at all, if you trade on the markets, um, feel free to jump over to script.trading. Script.trading is our new product that is based upon Lua Script. You can put all those Lua skills to good use by uh, coding up our algo. Uh, for the moment though, it's been a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much. Stay uh, in touch and subscribe to more videos coming very, very soon. Talk to you later.